Clark Aldrich is a global education thought leader, an adventurer in technology, and an explorer of the unknown. He has been called a guru by Fortune magazine. Clark is one of the top educational simulation designers in the world. His simulations are patent winning and have generated millions in revenue. Such accomplishments have won the heralded position among marketing leaders, market leaders as someone who drives results. Clark's innovation in education has resulted in his being recognized as an award-winning industry analyst, speaker, and writer. He serves on several university and industry boards and advises the intelligence community as well. Clark is the author of five books. Get this, Simulations and the Future of Learning, Learning by Doing, The Complete Guide to Simulations and Serious Games, Learning Online with Games, Simulations, and Virtual Worlds, and Unschooling Rules, which I understand has been quoted by President Obama recently and even read by the Pope. Nice going, Clark. One thing we know here in the virtual world that rings very true, unschooling does rule here. So I'm very proud to introduce Clark Aldrich to the stage to, pro to provide you some advice on what your expertise in virtual worlds might, where it might take you. Clark? Well, thank you so much. It's just a real honor and pleasure to be here. Let me let me just stand in the right spot. Always my first test. Yeah, right click on the square in front of the podium. I... Oh, right click. I I was a... click. Yeah, I put a blue ball down instead of, um... yes, Stelianos. There we go. Right click on that and say speech. Excellent. Thank you, Clark. Fantastic. I thought I could left click it earlier today. I think someone swapped this out on me. Anyway, thank you so much. Let me add my congratulations to the class. Uh, I really am so impressed with what you've accomplished. It, it is just amazing. Um, and so I, I got. I'm a little embarrassed about this. Um, I'm actually here not to to give a speech or anything, but I'm actually here to ask a, a handful of, of favors to, uh, of you all. Um, I have a few things on my to do list, uh, and as I was thinking about this audience here today. Uh, and your accomplishments, I kind of think you're the absolute right people to do that. So let me just go through a couple of my to-dos. Uh, and and if, I, I know some of you have things that you that you want to do with with your with your knowledge and with your accomplishments and your and your cert certificate here. But I I, I want to go through this. The first thing is I want you to to make virtual work happen across the world. Okay, I know it's a little ambitious, but I, I think you can do it. It is amazing as one travels around. The country and the world how hard it actually is to find good to find virtual work there are pockets of virtual work uh, certainly high technology companies uh, are good at that uh, but as you travel around Europe and part a lot of America and and all over the world uh, the amount of virtual work that actually happens is incredibly small uh, and so you people here are the perfect people to do two things I need you to role model what virtual work is and I need you to technically enable it. Uh, and you guys are, are perfect for both. Uh, because again, we live in a time of capriciousness when it comes to virtual work. You can't, the number of organizations that have decided to work virtually or not work virtually based totally on one manager, one director, one supervisor is incredible. And this is, this is despite the fact that infrastructure is getting more prevalent. Uh, traveling is certainly getting worse. Uh, commutes have gotten longer, real estate costs have skyrocketed. So just the need, the, the begging of you all to, to do what you can to make this concept of virtual work a reality for more people, uh, I think is, is endlessly needed right now, even though it doesn't feel like it to you guys right here, uh, desired and valuable. Uh, in fact, one of the killer apps of virtual work is not going to be employee satisfaction or even saving some real estate costs, but workplace continuity. Uh, truly, as we live in a world of greater threats uh, that are both biological and and uh, other people, uh, the notion of having uh, a workplace continuity that exists and can survive uh, shocks to the system when entire buildings are shut down because of SARS 
or bridges collapsing, uh, trapping uh, work, trapping employees from their workplace or vice versa. So again, really, really important. And, and I, again, I'm, I'm so excited because you guys are the perfect people to do it. Second is there is this weird pendulum that swings back and forth between virtual worlds or virtual reality and ubiquitous computing. And ubiquitous computing being how can we put as much technology around the real world as possible. Uh, and it is exciting to see all of you here too, because right now the, the, the pendulum has somewhat shifted almost from virtual worlds and virtual realities to ubiquitous computing with the prevalence of a bunch of platform computers, a couple of famous tablets and other things. And we do need both of those really, really importantly. So I am gonna ask the second thing I want you to do is make the case once again, and it can't be 3D movies, okay? That's my caveat, you can't be pushing 3D movies. Anything else though, to get, to make sexy, to make attractive the affordances of virtual worlds. And we are seeing a lot of examples of that. We're seeing the military using virtual worlds uh, as a safe place for soldiers to come back uh, when they are in Afghanistan or Iraq or some, some several of the other theaters to spend time with their family, uh, but sometimes more so when they when they get back and they're suffering from post traumatic stress syndrome, uh, a way of going and talking to doctors in, in a very very safe place. So the need for virtual worlds uh, is incredibly important, even though again in some cases the pendulum has been swinging. Sw uh, swinging to no i'm not drinking wine right now but thank you for asking uh swinging to ubiquitous computing um the third thing i need you to do is i need you to help make more leaders like you if you wouldn't mind and again i know you have other things you're planning but i need to clone you i need your skill sets to be in all the organizations with which i work and with which i i do business you all have the skill set of the future you are perfectly positioned to be the managers, the leaders, the directors of the future. Let me be a little more specific. What you have earned here through your work, which is unbelievable, is the ability to build trust virtually. For people that you've never met face to face, you have communities who trust you all implicitly, who know your strengths, who know your weaknesses, who know that you will do what you say you do. That ability to build trust virtually is, is the gold of the future. It is the asset, the resource to mine. More than that, or as a result of that, you have the ability to be productive virtually. Uh, again, that is a skill set that we all desperately, desperately need. You can work globally in this increasing global world where there is both opportunity and also distrust from country to country. Your ability to work globally, I've been thinking about it, you make me sick. Um, you're so comfortable at doing it. We need every manager everywhere, every director, every vice president, every leader to have that comfort of working globally. So I need you to do whatever you can to clone yourself. The final part of this sort of uh, director of the future is your, your knowledge of technology. We do need so many more people who are running organizations to have not just a, oh, I use my Xbox today, or oh, I went online on Facebook, aren't I technologically savvy, but people who have bits and bytes under their fingernails. You guys understand the roles of intellectual property. You understand the role of, of what's free and what's not, and how to pay for it, and how to manage it, and how to build it. Uh, we're all so desperate for people who know how to build things. Uh, and, and the idea of, of creating and working with teams to create stuff is just absolutely, uh, again, amazing and something that I need uh, you to figure out how you can not only uh, be brought in by organizations to do, but get more and more and more people to think like you, to act like you, because in that uh, is the future of, of both this country and 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 the entire industry now the fourth one the fourth thing i'd like you to, to think about doing is is probably the biggest one so again the other three i know were fairly lightweight for people of your of your caliber um the fourth one is is certainly my biggest and that is there are three types of content as we've talked about a little bit today and certainly you guys have, have practiced there is the notion of learning to be there is a notion of learning to do and there is the notion of learning to know and so far, all media for thousands of years, for probably tens of thousands of years, has been so biased towards learning to know. 
Now, I love books as much as anyone. I love movies as much as anyone. Uh, I, I use Google and Bing all the time, but I'm really getting sick of learning to know content. I'm sick of not being able to access learning to be content and learning to do content. You guys right now have such incredible expertise in all three. Again, learn to be. Who am I? What is my role in this stage? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How can we create media to reinforce that? Now, right now, Twitter, Facebook uh, have, have done a really decent job at pushing forward the learning to be threshold. Uh, I think most of us have used it. However, these are still very, very clumsy tools. And one of the greatest educational opportunities in unschooling rules of the next 10, 20, 30 years is helping people rigorously learn who they are. So this notion of media to support learning to be is incredibly important. Uh, and again, no one that I know of has the experience that you do to do that. Uh, then there's still learning to know, and obviously there's a huge role here. The final one, though, is, is learning to do. And learning to do is, uh, it's unbelievable that we do not, we're not better at teaching people to learn to do. Uh, we have, again, this incredible technology around learning to know. We have this fast emerging billion dollar anyway technology around learning to be, but we still suck when it comes to learning to do. We don't have good authoring environments. If you said, teach someone how to become a better builder, teach someone how to be a better leader, teach someone how to be a better innovator, teach someone how to ride a bicycle, all of these things, you just think how absolutely pathetic media is in its current form to capture that knowledge from experts and more importantly, to develop that in people who do not have skills. So the whole notion of learning to learning to do is this billion dollar, trillion dollar opportunity that's just sitting out there. We've got learning to know. We've been doing that for, for, for tens of thousands of years. Learning to be from a media perspective, we've just gotten good at that. But now we really got to do learning to do. We really have to figure out how to build tools, how to build App, how to build business models, how to build ecosystems, even how to build search engines around this most important type of content. Uh, now, you guys all have built up a vocabulary as well as a technical knowledge about what it takes to learn to do. And again, I know I've looked at a lot of computer games. Now, also, I've obviously played a lot of computer games, but still, I have looked at a lot of computer games, a lot of other simulations, and say, well, what is this grammar around? learning to do. Um, the notion of levels and level designs, giving people smaller challenges than great, than bigger challenges and then bigger challenges. And doing that in a way, if you do this well, you never have to teach a student anything. You just give them carefully controlled levels where they can expand out their own knowledge in a way that is invisible, that is seamless. And I spend all my time working with organizations trying to figure out, again, how do we develop these kinds of skills predictably, but in a way that we never have to teach them anything. Uh, there's also the whole learning to do in terms of roles, the learning to do in terms of pacing yourself, uh, the learning to do in terms of competing against other organizations in order to accomplish something before they do. These are all the new vocabularies around learning to do. Likewise, there's interface issues. How do you present the information that people need in order to help them do what they do. And we look at Second Life, we look at World of Warcraft, but now how can we take these same perspectives, these same interfaces, and translate them to the productive world? Because frankly, as much fun as games are, being productive is even better. So one of the great challenges I'm gonna put to you is saying how do we take what we've learned here and how can we build an ecosystem? How can we create authoring tools? How can we create search engines? How can we create scalable media that not just school children, but corporate executives, uh, heads of nonprofit organizations, government officials, military officials can tap it? I mean, at what point, if you are a soldier in Afghanistan and you decide you want to work with the natives rather than to point your gun at the natives, you want to learn how to lead them, how to collaborate with them. What search engine exists for that? How can I use this incredible tool of the internet in order to learn skills like that? Likewise, if I want to drive a, drive a car, 
Likewise, if I want to ride a bicycle. Likewise, if I want to practice innovation and understand how innovation can change my life or eat well. Suppose I want to figure out how I can have a diet that helps me, not hurts me. I can't Google that right now. I can't Bing that right now. I can't read a book. So all of these important skills, you guys right here have the absolute critical insights to create the next generation of media. Sure, if you want to become the next billionaire, trillionaire, the next Zuckerman, go for it. I have no problem with that. But think about this third opportunity, not learning to know, not learning to be, but learning to do. How can you create the media to support that? So those are my four little activities that I'd like you to think about uh, on the way between here and the Mayan Island. Uh, you know, as you're thinking about your, your own graduation ceremony, if you could do any of those things or all of those things, uh, and again, get virtual work happening, both role modeling it and technically enable it. Second of all, help the pendulum swing back to the productive use of virtual worlds far beyond how it's used today. Virtual worlds today are underused, uh, certainly compared to ubiquitous computing, and there's a huge opportunity and value to be had there. Third, clone yourselves, make more leaders like yourselves. Uh, in the areas of building trust, working globally, really understanding technology. And again, this notion of bring learning to do on scale with learning to know and learning to be as these three pillars of content and media-supported uh, information transfer uh, that can make the world a much, much better place. So with that said, uh, congratulations. Thank you very, very much, and have a great day. Take care. Part of profound advice, and uh, boy, did you hit on so many key points that um, we have talked about in the in the course that we have been guided by by reading your work, um, and now that is punctuated by your being here tonight and speaking for us.